All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechak, Kudash, the ones to the elders and the apostles of the great millstone. Say, taste to all the I can push the word of true sincerity with charity. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father, whom the word and he calls God and Jehovah, Bahasham is in the name. Yahweh Shai is his son's name, with the word and he calls Jesus and Rechak, Kudash, the Holy Spirit. As always, you so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are the Israelites according to Holy Scriptures, as well as the speckled bird that scattered Israel like foreigners, scattered amongst other nations whose outer appearance may seem to be of those nations to whom they've been scattered to, but whose lineage through their father's line go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are Israelites, no matter what your outer appearance may seem to be. And as always, I'm Brother Yadaya from the Great Millstone Branch in Chicago, and I'm back up with another lesson. It's going to be entitled, Yes, You Wasted Your Lives. And hey, <clears throat> Hey, I'm going to grab two scriptures really quick, you know, because I was at work early and I was just thinking about this. Like, hey, you know, the, the men of the Lord, hey, these people are going to be ashamed of how they came at us, man. You know, because hey, they, they think that we're wasting our lives. But hey, the, hey, look, the most high is going to bring every work at the judgment. The Lord understands. The, hey, the Lord knows, man. You, hey, it's the end of the world and you people have been living for yourselves, man. And hey, it's a judgment coming for that. I'm going to grab this first. Youth vanity. <sighs> this is uh, Ecclesiastes 11 and 9. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou for that for all these things, the Most High will bring thee into judgment. And they, 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 that's ultimately for everybody, man. Hey, hey, these people got the option, you know. Hey, the, you know, Esau even giving a credence to do whatever the hell they want. And they... They can do that, man. But guess what? It's going to lead to a judgment. It's going to lead to death at the end of that. But as it says in Sirach 20 and 32, necessary patience in seeking the Lord is better than to live a life without God. Because hey, that's, that path, that straight and narrow is going to lead to salvation, a deliverance. But this is Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. Let him, 6 and verse 7, it says, be not deceived. The Most High is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Right. So hey, everything that you, hey, if you're sowing wickedness or you, you, you're you sowing, uh, you know, basically selfishness, not selfishness. Well, yeah, yeah, selfish, selfishness. If you're living for you, man, and not for the Lord, <laughs> hey, guess what? Hey, hey, the Lord ain't going to be there for you when you need him. To be simple, verse 8. For he that sold to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that sold to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. What does that mean? If you're doing whatever the hell you want to further you and your goals and not serving the Lord, guess what? That's going to lead to death. That's going to lead to death ultimately. But he that sold to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. So, hey, hey, these works that we're doing, Yahweh wrote this out, we are those men, hey, it's going to lead to deliverance. It's going to lead to the Lord passing over us. Bye. Right. It's like it. It says, verse 9, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So, wait, man, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a we have a reward coming for our works. But, hey, these people, these people are smoked. This Matthew chapter 16 and 24, then said, Yahweh shine to his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me, right? Hey, hey, Yahusha is the example, right? Why, 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 why would you not want to follow the Lord, right? You love God so much, right? So, hey, the scriptures say, let him uh, deny himself, meaning put aside your will, whatever you want to do with your life, and follow the Lord. It says, and take up his cross and follow me. Verse 25, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. So if you're trying to save your life in this world, if you're trying to preserve your life here in Babylon and great and, you know, go to college and get a degree so you have a good, nice paying job and have a family, you know, and your family stay together. Hey, ultimately, you're going to lose your life. You're going to die because guess what? You're, you're living selfishly. You're not living for the Lord. That's not the will of the Lord. It says, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. And that's the men of the Lord. Who else has sacrificed their life for this, man? Who else is actually out here living it? Not only reading it and speaking it, but actually living it, man. 
you know, making these necessary sacrifices, man. Hey, in the book of Hebrews 10 and 34, or uh, 10 and 35-ish, it says, cast, cast ye, uh, it says, uh, well, the book of Hebrews, it says, uh, for the, for the Lord is not unrighteous, forget your labor of love, you know, it says, cast not off your faith, which have great recompense of reward. Hey, we got, hey, we have much a more enduring substance in heaven waiting for us for these sacrifices that we made here right now. But hey, for these people, hey, you wasted your life, man. It's the end of the world. And you had the prophets been out here since what? Around 1960. Breaking it down for you, making a plane upon table since then. And then hitting the YouTube scene. And then even when this whole crown royale thing popped off, the prophets was still out here telling you the people to get right, man. And you still decided to close your ears and not follow the Lord, man. Hey, you people waste, you, you people through. Verse 26, for what is a man profit if he shall gain the whole world right? You got everything that you ever wanted, man. You got you got your big house. You got your nice Beamer. You got your mini mansion. You know, got the high paying job, a bunch of a bunch of debt as well. And lose his own soul. But hey, you're not serving the Lord. You're not in good standing where you how will buy show me how shy. Or what shall a man give in exchange for a soul? For the son of man shall come in, in the glory of his father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Right. The Lord's going to give out that reward and a reward can be either good or bad, depending on what standing you are. So if you for you two thirds that heard this truth and didn't want to, you know, repent. Hey, guess what? The Lord coming back with a sword to plead with you, as it says in the book of Isaiah, I believe, 66, 66 and 15. <laughs> But hey, to the to the men of the Lord that's been sacrificing, breaking it down out there, hey, the Lord is gonna come with that healing in his wings. Malachi chapter four, verse two. But unto you that fear the name of the that fear my name, shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, man? Gonna heal us of our infirmities, man, all of our weaknesses, all of our insecurities, man, all of our blemishes, our broken hearts, all that, man. Hey, hey, we gonna be Gucci. We gonna be Gucci. Isaiah 55 and verse 6, seek ye how while he may be found, call ye upon him while he is near. And hey, that's what the men of the Lord have been doing. That's what that's hey, that we've been seeking the Lord. Because hey, the Lord is here right now. That grace is still here. But hey, when that grace, when that mercy period is cut off, man, hey, you people gonna be through. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord. And hey, the men of the Lord are example. Hey, Yahweh Shai is, the, is the, the chief, is the author and the finisher of our faith, right? But hey, he has men that's out here doing it. We can't even be perfect. But you got men in the flesh just like you are trying to be to the best of their abilities. And of course, we're going to fall short. We in the flesh. But hey, you can still try. It says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto Yahweh and he will have mercy upon him and to our power for he will abundantly pardon. And hey, the Lord's mercies is good. You just got to want to, you just got to want to repent, you know? But these people, they don't want to repent, man. It's Matthew 6 and 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rough dust corrupt and where th thieves break through and steal, right? You're not supposed to be putting things that you hold near and dear. You know, you're not supposed to be seeking those things in this life and putting them on earth, but you're supposed to seek those things that's in the heaven. As it says in the book of Colossians, man. Uh, Colossians 3 and 1. If ye then be risen with Hamashiach, seek those things which are above where Hamashiach sit up on the right hand of the Most High. Because they all this stuff going to be passed over. It's going to be destroyed, man. Hey, it says in the heavens and the, hey, it says uh in the second Peter three, man, hey, this place is reserved unto fire against uh fire fire. This place is reserved unto fire unto the uh the judgment of ungodly men, roughly paraphrasing. Hey, all this gonna be dust and ashes, man. It says verse two, set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. Right, seek those heavenly things, seek wisdom. Wisdom making you friends with the most high and he love of none but those that dwell with wisdom. For ye are dead and your life is here with Hamashiach and the most high. Right. We dead to this world and hey, we hey, our life is going to be revealed when Hamashiach comes back. Verse four, when Hamashiach, who is our life, because this is the only this is true life. These people not even living. They just they just breathing and getting by. Even the, even the ones that got the bread and got the mini mansions and the nice SUV sport. Hey, they just getting by. It says, verse four, when Mashiach, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. So, yeah, man. 
hey, hey we're going to get our glory, you know, just hey, in due season. You know, but uh, this Matthew 6 and 20, but lay it for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also, right? Whatever you cherish, whether it be, that, that's where you're going to be. That's where your mind is going to be at. So do you cherish serving the Lord, having a good standing relationship with the Lord? Or do you cherish the things of this earth? You know, which is a loss because they, as the scriptures say, this world hasted fast to pass away. Job 20 and 5, that the triumphant of the wicked is short and the joy of the hypocrite, but for a moment. This is sent for a season, you know? These things are temporal. These things are going to be destroyed. They're not everlasting. You know? This is 2nd Edward 16 and 62. Yea, and the spirit of the almighty power, which made all things to search about all hidden things and the secrets of the earth. Surely he knoweth your inventions and what you think of your hearts, even them that sin and will hide their sin. Right? These people are going to be found spotted when the Lord comes back. Therefore, have the Lord exactly searched out all your works and he will put you all to shame, right? You, your works consisted of wickedness, forward in your own self and not your Hawaii Hawashai's agenda. Wake up his people, feed the sheep, come back, repent. And it says and he will put you all to shame, right? And your sin and when your sins are brought forth, you shall be ashamed before men and your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. Because the Lord going to come back and he's, you're going to be without your uh, spiritual clothing. What will you do or how will you hide your sins before the Most High, his angels? Behold, the Most High is the judge. The Most High himself is the judge. Fear him, leave all from your sins and forget your iniquities to meddle no more with them forever. So shall the Most High lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. And that's the breakdown. Look, repent, change your ways and, and seek the Lord and aid the Lord to bring you through it. But for you that didn't want to do that, hey, you're going to. The Lord is going to be displeased. This Nahum 1 and 7. Yahweh is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knoweth them that trust in him. Because we find a, a trouble, troublesome days are coming. And hey, you know what it is. Hey, the script, hey, look at any movie, man. Toward the end of the movie, you get the, you know, it, uh, well, you got the climax of the movie. You know, that's when things get tense. But hey, the end is going to be just like that. It's going to be it's going to be a negative ending, you know. Hey, look at how America was started. You think the end of it ain't going to be the same way? So, hey, man, get under that covering of the Lord. This Isaiah 26, verse 20. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chamber, chambers. Hey, it says in the book of Isaiah as well. Uh, enter in at the gates. Righteous nation may enter through. Isaiah 26 and verse 2, open ye the gates that the righteous nations which keep the truth may enter in. That will keep him a perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in Yahweh forever for Yahweh, for the Lord Yahweh is everlasting strength. So wait, man, hey, those ones that's going to be entering in those chariots, those secret chambers, which is the truth right now. But ultimately it's going to be those chariots are going to be those ones that trust in the Lord that 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 found that esteemed. The reproach and a burden of of this truth higher higher than the uh than a than the uh reproach of this world you know oh uh, or what these people may say you know because that's what Jay care about what my girlfriend gonna say about this hey amen to hell with your girlfriend do what you gotta do as a man of the Lord you know you an Israelite man hey do what you gotta do everything else will fall in line straight up Isaiah 26 and 20, come my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for, as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. Because the Lord is going to come back. He's going to be angry. Yahweh, it says, for behold, Yahweh will come up out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The Lord ain't, the Lord ain't coming back to just open his, his arms to every single nation of people. No, he's coming. Hey, this world is wicked. And you, this is how you can prove that this world is wicked. And the Lord ain't coming back to say that. Compare the, what's being pushed in the earth until the Levitical law and tell me if this is a a, a God a God fearing world that we living in. Now, ask yourself this. Is God going to come back happy? Isaiah 26 and verse 21. For behold, Yahweh will come up out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity, and iniquity is sin upon sin upon sin upon sin. 
The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. So, hey, the Lord is coming back with a sword. He said, hey, what was that? Uh, think not. I ain't going to paraphrase it. 10 and 34. It's Luke 10 and 34. I'm back. <laughs> Matthew 10 34. <laughs> think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. What's the Lord going to do with that sword? We're going to get a little critical, too. This Isaiah 66 and 15. For behold, Yahweh will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger, which answers what this scenario we said, with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will Yahweh plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Let's go with what that word uh, plead is. Isaiah 66 and 16. This Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15, for behold, Yahweh will come with his world with fire and his chariots like a whirlwind to rend his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Let me hit 16. For by fire and by his sword, let's look at that word. Uh, let me see what sword says. Harab. <laughs> sword, knife, tools for cutting stone. Plead. Shapat. To judge, vindicate, punish, take as a lawgiver or judge or govern, to rule, govern, judge, to decide controversy, to execute judgment. The Lord's going to have a sword in his hand. Hey, to execute judgment, man. Simple as that. Proverbs 11 and, 11 and 4. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivered from death. So a hey, riches, a hey, what's riches, man? Your money, your house, your home, you know, that, that vault that you got with a gun in it or whatever, you know. That uh, that damn gun room that you got, you know that you know you go and tap a wall and the whole switch out, hey, that, hey, that's not gonna deliver you from the day of the Lord. It says, but righteousness delivered from death. And what, what uh, what what makes a person righteous if they have faith? And what is that faith is gonna be coupled with with works, proving that you mean what you say. So hey, these people are gonna be through, man. Your your car, your nice car ain't gonna save you. You know your mini mansion. You know, that, that nice area that you live in, man, hey, that's all going to be against you. Only thing that's going to get you up out of the troubles that's going to come is the, is the covering of the Lord. Wisdom of Solomon 5 and verse 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. And that's what the men of the Lord are out there doing, man. We out there standing stiffly for the name of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, and breaking it down. Verse 2, when they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they look for. Because hey, the Lord's going to come back with a glorious deliverance. In fact, it's going to be so much better. They're not even going to, uh, they're not even going to, it's going to be, it's going to be much greater than the first exodus. Let me put it like that. Verse 3, and they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, this was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach. These people are going to look at this. Oh, oh hey, these people make sense of our family members, the heathens, that had seen and know what we was about, man, our family members, man. This was he. These, this, this was real, huh? This was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach. This we made fun of him, mocked him, scoffed him, told him to find something else to do. And a proverb of reproach, uh, they shamed him. It says in the book of Sirach, 8 and verse 5, uh, uh, reproach not a man that turned for sin, but remember that we are all worthy of punishment. Verse 4, we fools accounted his life madness and his enemy without honor. They, they thought we was wasting our lives. They thought we wasn't doing nothing. They thought what we was doing was in vain. They thought we was in a, a so-called cult. Verse 5, how is he numbered among the children of God and his lot is amongst the saints? Reading this, how could you even want to waver against this like how could you even want to bet against it like the script is no gray areas in the scriptures man the lord give you the the the, the righteous standpoint okay we doing this to get up out of this because we got that faith but I also give you the unbelieving standpoint and then it gives you what they're going to be saying how is he numbered among the children of god and has lot among the saints therefore have we erred from the way of truth they didn't they didn't they didn't come into the knowledge of how about shimmy i was available and the light of righteousness have not shined upon us, and the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. <laughs> Malachi. 
so the Lord wasn't dealing with them in a the Lord when he come back he not going to be displeased with them we wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction these people wore themselves the wore, they, wore themselves out in wickedness and destruction yea we have gone through deserts where they're laid in way but as for the way of the Lord we have not known it they didn't did this and they did that and they did this and they did that but serving the Lord they didn't even give a crack at that Verse 8, what have pride profited us? It tells you in the book of Sirach that pride is the beginning when one departed from his maker. I believe Sirach or Proverbs, probably both, more than likely both. Or what good have riches with our vaunting brought us? I believe vaunting goes into like haughty, which is like proud or braggadocious. Let me look it up really quick. Acclaim, boast, brag, <laughs> exalt, basically. What good have riches, whether it be, you know, substance women whatever what good have riches with our boasting you know vaulting brought us all those things are passed away like a shadow and as a post that hasted by and it tells you in the book of Sirach that in the day of affliction uh this Sirach 11 and 15 In the day of prosperity, there is the forgetfulness of affliction. And in the day of affliction, there is no more remembrance of prosperity. These things are going, to, these things are going to, hey, these people serving their flesh, man, and not serving the Lord, they're going to, they're going to really regret it. And it's deep. Then I got to do a lesson on Sirach 11. It says, uh, yeah, basically, hey, these people, they're not going to remember their nice cars or the girls that they was popping when they when they when all hell breaks loose. Verse 26, for it is an easy thing unto the Lord in the day of death to reward a man according to his ways. Once again, a reward. The affliction of an hour make of a man forget pleasure and in his end, his deeds shall be discovered. So, hey, man, these people, they're wasting their time. Hey, that's why the scriptures say, envy not the glory of his sinner, for thou knowest not his end. But we do know his end. It's death. And death isn't fun. Verse 9, all those things are passed away like a shadow and as a post that hasteth by. You know, so that car is going to fade away. The women are going to fade away. That lust that that, that you once had for that woman, and that's going to fade away. Because, hey, you're going to be worried about how you finna survive. You're going to be worried about what the Lord got in store for you. Verse 10, as a ship that passeth over the waves of the water, which when it is gone, the trace thereof cannot be found, neither the pathway of the kneel of the keel in the waves. Or as when a bird hath flown through the air, there is no token of her way to be found, but the light air being beaten with the stroke of her wings and parted with the violent noise and motion, motion of them is passed through, and therein afterwards, no sign where she went to be where she went is to be found. Or as or like as when an arrow is shot at a market part of the air, which immediately cometh together again, so that a man cannot know where it went through. Even so, we in like manner, as soon as we were born, began to draw to our end. It had no sign of virtue to show, but were consumed in our own wickedness. These people are consumed in what they want to do, which ultimately is wickedness. The scriptures tell you that he that departed away from the uh, knowledge of the Lord. I'm going to grab it really quick. And wickedness bring death. Proverbs 21, 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding, because this truth is understanding, shall remain in the congregation of the dead. These people, they ate, they, they threw. Even so, verse 13, again, even so in like manner, as soon as we were born, began to draw to our end, it had no sign of virtue. Look at this word, virtue. Behavior showing high moral standards. Quality considered morally good or desirable in a person, a good or useful quality of a thing. It says uh, virginity or chastity, especially of a woman. But really, hey, you looking at that, you can look at that as abstinence, you know, abstaining from this world. Uh, it pretty much behavior showing how moral standards, basically, you know, for face value or, you know, this ain't the etymology, but it's good enough for the. For the point, but it says, uh, but we're consumed in our own wickedness, right? Your own wickedness, because all oh, that you, yeah, nah, dog, I, I, I care, I want to do something after I go to high school. I mean, after I graduate high school, 
you know, and this is things that, that we've heard, you know, you know, I, I got, I want to do something else in my life. That's fine. But guess what? If it ain't serving the Lord, you through, you wasted your life, man. At the, the end of the world, you were presented with the truth. And guess what? You didn't, you didn't hold fast to it. You rejected it. You turned your back. Verse 14, for the hope of the ungodly is like dust that is blown away with the wind, like a thin froth that is driven away from the storm, like as a smoke, which is dis which is dispersed here and there with the tempest and pass away as the remembrance of a guest that tarried but a day. But the righteous live forevermore. Their reward also is with the Lord. Right. These people, they get their rewards in this world. You know, I'll talk about that in Second Edges, the ninth chapter, man. It says they thought scorn of his law. I mean, Second Edges, like five. It says in verse nine, it says they have abused my ways and cast cast them about despitefully. Hey, hey, your reward is, is is this world. That's your consolation. That's your that's your feel good. That's that's you. Our consolation is going to be Yahweh Hashem Shai and His deliverance. Their reward is also with the Lord and care of them is with the Most High. The Most High cares about us. Hey, it says in the Book of Proverbs. That he that turneth his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer should be abomination. So the Lord definitely ain't dealing with, with the two thirds of our people. Therefore shall they receive a glorious kingdom and a beautiful crown from the Lord's hand. For with his right hand, he shall cover them and with his arm, he shall protect them. The Lord is going to deal. The Lord is going to crown us. And it's written, Second Edgers, I believe it's uh, one in one uh, book of Revelation, man. The Lord will hand out those crowns to the men that stood stiffly, abstained from this world. Chose to say, you know what? I ain't gonna go to college. You know, I'm I'm finna serve the Lord. I ain't finna, you know, I ain't finna, you know, I ain't finna marry you. I'm finna serve the Lord. I'm finna be married to the Lord. I'm putting the Lord first. I'm finna go ahead and take this little BS job, which which is gonna allow me to serve the Lord to the best of my abilities, of course. And I'm finna patiently wait on the salvation of the Lord, cause hey, it's a great recompense coming for that man. Hey, the scriptures tell you, hey, the Lord is not unrighteous to forget your work and your labor of love, which you do minister. So, hey, man, the Lord, he got us. You people that that that, ch that decided to chase the bag, hey, you threw. Call Halayim La, Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh, Shai, Ba'asham, Rechak, Wadash. The bonds to the elders and the apostles of the great millstone. Citation to the eye can put his word with true sincerity. Charity, Shalom, Barak, them in a Baba ball.